Hi, I'm Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with two of my favorite people here in Lebanon, Marion County. You know Yvonne from mm -hmm. Channel 6 and Pigeon that we've had on here over many, many times over the years yes, here on yes. Channel 6 as well. And we have a great recap to a story that we've talked about for, well, almost since we've started here at the station. Mm -hmm. uh, but some good news that's coming in 2017. Yes, sir. And that is that yeah. Pigeon's son, Aaron Glasscock, is being released from prison. Yes, he is. It's a blessing. Yes, and well, I, I was telling Gary, you had your very own Christmas miracle this year. Oh, I did. <laughs> I really did. Because right, you really found did. out just right, right before, before Christmas. Christmas. Mm -hmm. right. right, right, that he was commuted by Obama. And it was really unheard of because he asked, let's see, he was denied in January of 2016 because mm -hmm. we put in for commutation and he was denied and which after that the pardon attorney I've forgotten her name she put in her resignation so uh, one of the newspapers turned around and put in an open records request and asked for uh, her resignation letter and got it and published it and in it, she stated that uh, it was, uh, I think it was the Assistant Attorney General did not give, of course, that batch that Aaron was denied in to the president. Oh. So I wrote a letter and uh, asked, you know, what they planned on doing about it that that was what this process was all about, was uh, for President Obama to make the decision on whether they would be commuted or not, and not just Aaron, but all of them that had gone mm -hmm. to all the trouble and everything were denied this process. And I thought it was unfair, and but we never heard anything. And uh, so Aaron gets a call from Mr. Feldman out of Florida. He it was on a steering committee that Mr. Obama um, put together, I think, in mm -hmm. 2014. He's an attorney. Mm -hmm. And he had contacted us wanting to look at Aaron's commutation because we already had it in there. And he said he was a poster child for uh, the request. So. The steering, this steering committee put in a recommendation that uh, Aaron's request be granted. Wow. So uh, he called Aaron and uh, he said, Aaron, I don't know how this has happened, but Obama requested your commutation back. And mm -hmm. it's never happened in the history of the presidency, as far as anybody can tell, mm -hmm. and he has granted your commutation. Fantastic. So Aaron's going to come home this year. Absolutely, that's great. Now, as I said, we've been talking about this story for mm -hmm. uh, ever since I've been here, because when did Aaron go into, when was he convicted? 1999. 1999. And let's recap for those who aren't familiar with the story, uh, Aaron's story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Aaron was arrested in 1999 and charged with conspiracy to uh, distribute cocaine in Florida. Uh, I think that's what it was. Trans transport, distribute, or something cocaine. And uh, we went through four trials. We had, uh, let's see, one hung jury. No, we had more than that. We were asked to take a mistrial on the first one, and we did because the judge uh, pulled two government witnesses that stated that Aaron was telling the truth. And then the next two were two hung juries. And then the fourth trial, that is when they finally found him guilty. And he was given uh, 30 years. And it's federal because it was it's transferred to state lines. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, he had to serve 85% uh, of the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's been a lot of new laws that have been coming out since 1999, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he put in a request for a reduction himself and was just recently granted uh, a two-point reduction. I don't understand all this point stuff, but they do the time you're given by points. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he got his time reduced down to where he would have gone to a halfway house maybe at the end of 2019 instead of being released in 2025. So uh, anyway, that's basically uh, where we stand at now. And so um, and then you had gone through lots of processes to hopefully get it, yeah. get it what have you. And <laughs> this back in was January. our third commutation request. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and that was the one that was denied in January, and you yes. thought that was basically We the thought last this option. was over, and everybody asked, uh, you know, what's the next step? And I said, well, you know, that's all that we will be doing. If anything else is done, it'll be up to God. So, and that's what mm -hmm. I told everybody. So, he and answered. He must talked with the uh, President Obama and made it happen. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> so God answered. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, Pigeon, I remember there's lots and lots of paperwork that went into this. I mean, yes. over, over the years, mm -hmm. you've, you've gone through quite a bit of research and uh -huh. um, tried to do the best you could to get this thing rolling as quickly as you could. What are some of the things that you've learned about the justice system that you might want to pass on? Boy, it's, it's hard when you get to that point where you're dealing with the justice system. Uh, when you get to where you have to go to trial, it is really, 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 really hard. Uh, you're, you know, you're better off obeying the laws than you are breaking them. I'm telling you, it's it's a really, really hard process dealing with them just because of the limits. And uh, because once you're convicted, you know, you're at their mercy and you have to you know, go by their rules, and um, you're limited on what you can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just a process that you have to go through, like with us and everything, you know, you have to go through the appeals, and then you go through another set of appeals, and then you go through another set of appeals, and then after you get done with all that, then you can put in for commutation request. And, you know, you just have to do everything first before you can put in your request. Yeah. Everything has to be in order. Everything yeah. has to be in order. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be in order. And uh, but Pigeon, it's just hard to but, deal but, with. But, but you never gave up. Oh, no. You never gave up. No. I couldn't give up on any of my children. There, what what, what, what kept you going? What kept you? It's been 18 years now, almost 18 years that I've known you, and you've you've always kept going. What is it that motivates you to keep going with this? Having him home, <laughs> having him home, and knowing that he could have a, you know, start his life. He's always wanted a family. And I wanted to see that. Mm -hmm. And basically that is what kept me, that is what has kept me going. Mm -hmm. I wanted uh, his freedom. If I could have changed places with him, I would have much rather have done that than to see him in there. Uh, it just, you know, it broke my heart seeing him in there. And, you know, I would have done anything to F, you know. Yeah. Well, over the, that, over the years, what yeah. Kept, and mm -hmm. that's what kept me going yeah. and everything and, and what kept me watching uh, mm -hmm. all the new laws that came out and everything because, you know, not just for Aaron, uh, for a lot of the nonviolent offenders, I'm not talking about the violent ones, I'm mm -hmm. talking about the nonviolent 
Um, the laws, in my opinion, are just too strict. Um, when I can walk around and I can see people that have murdered people get less time, when I can hear about people that have betrayed our country and have actually fought against our own country, brought up arms against our country, and they get less time than what Aaron got for conspiracy on a drug charge and a nonviolent offense versus a violent offense and them to get mm -hmm. such a lesser time, there is something wrong with our judicial system. Um, and also, if it had been a state charge as opposed to a federal charge, right. it would, he have, would have gotten a better couple of years from yeah. that nature as opposed to Yes. 35, you said it was? 30. 30. 30 years. 30 years. So it was a federal going over. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but now he is actually going to be here in April. January. Well. Right. He's going to be released. He will be released, we are hoping, before his birthday, which is January the 20th. Mm -hmm. He will go to a halfway house, is what we know so far. Mm -hmm. But his actual release his actual release date is April the 18th of 2017 mm -hmm. from a halfway house. Mm -hmm. So that's as a transition yes. period is the halfway house. Yes, right? and from what I gather and from, you know, what I've heard, and, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't dealt with any of this myself before, so it's kind of hard. I think they help you get your driver's license and, you know, kind of help you get used to being back into the real world. Mm -hmm. um, you have to take into consideration that for 17 years, um, you know how we just walked in that door and we turned on the light and everything, you know, Aaron has not had that freedom to walk in and out of a door. So, so you know, be a transition period for yeah. Yeah. him. There's going to be a transition period for him, and, and hopefully, how old was this, he, when he went in? He was. Uh, he had just turned 22. Just turned 22 when this happened. Okay. So, and he was in his third year of college. He was in his fourth year. Fourth year. He was in his fourth year of college, and uh, he was. Uh, let's see, March. He was about a less than two months away from graduating pre-med program. Mm -hmm. so, so when he gets out, he'll be looking for employment. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And he's got a good-looking resume. Mm -hmm. They've had some of, they've been uh, real good helping down at Manchester, the uh, officers and everything, trying to help him. Uh, already start transitioning and everything and helping with his resume and stuff. So, uh, Now what uh, is he looking forward to when he gets out? He said a home cooked meal and a chocolate pie. <laughs> uh, we've already got the chocolate pie covered and the home cooked meal is mm -hmm, covered. Mm -hmm. My niece is covering one and my nephew is covering the other so that they'll be ready for him when we get him back from Manchester into Louisville, so Fantastic. we've we've got those two parts got covered, covered right huh? now. Got it covered. Now, as I said, we've been talking with you over many years about this story, and the people of the community have been supportive too. Oh, they've been, been, been so well. supportive. So, um, so I know he'll be happy to be back in his hometown, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everybody that I see, they just just want to touch him just to make sure that he's really here. Make sure that he's he's uh, he's really here, and I hope everybody's patient because it is going to take him time to adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, I don't know, you know, how, how and I know this is going to sound odd and everything, but he's not used to being out among people in a big crowd. Uh, the, everything that we take for granted and mm -hmm. everything, he's not going to be used to that. And uh, it's going to be, you know, a gradual. So I hope, uh, hope everybody is going to be patient and uh, let him take time to adjust. Because uh, really, you know, I don't know what to expect. I, I really, I, I don't, I don't know what to expect. You, you think about it and everything. He hasn't slept in a real bed. You know, and yeah. there are a lot of things that I have tried not to think about over <laughs> 17 years, and and they come back and they'll come back and haunt me sometimes, and that's why, you know, Yvonne knows that I don't go, haven't gone a lot of places, and and uh, still don't, and a lot of that is because uh, I go and I get to thinking, oh, Aaron would love to be here. And, you know, it's just really hard going anywhere knowing that you have one that if he could, he would. And so I just kind of, it made it harder for me to cope. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I chose not to put myself in that position. Uh, not that... It, I didn't want to be around people. It, it it is that it just made it harder for me to, you know, cope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I did what was easier for me to to cope, so that Aaron would know that anything was wrong. Because yeah. I never, in the seventeen years, Aaron's never seen me cry, and. Uh, you know, he's never heard me cry until the other day when he called and told me he was coming home. Now he heard me cry that day. Yes. <laughs> so when that happened, you didn't know that this was even in the works. It was no. a complete surprise to everybody. I mean, it was happened. a, you know, no, we didn't have a clue. <laughs> it was a complete surprise. We yes. did not have a What a Christmas gift. Wow. Have a clue. And so he was given permission to give you to notify you. That yes. was the first time you were here. Uh -huh. They let him call as soon as he got that call. They let him call in the office to notify me so that I would know before it hit hit the wire, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that I wouldn't read it, you know, <laughs> on the internet or Facebook <laughs> yes. or whatever. And so what he said? He said, well, when I picked up the phone, if you've had anybody in an institution or whatever, it's usually this call is from an institution and blah, 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 and you have to punch a number to accept it. Well, I pick up the phone and I say hello and says, Mama, do you know who this is? And he's always told me, he said, Mama, if you ever get a call and I'm on, just on that phone and I say your name, says, something good is going on. He says, that it's either a come get me or something. Well, when he said that, I said, Aaron, can I come get you now? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he said, Mama, President Obama has commuted my sentence. Fantastic. And to be honest, I just laid my head down, and I said, praise Jesus, and I just started crying. And at that time, I didn't even know when he was getting out. I just knew he was commuted. <laughs> I just laid my head down and started crying. And, and he was crying, and I was crying. And, and uh, you know, and then I started asking questions. And I says, do I get to come get you now? I don't even think he heard me when I first said it the first time. I think that just went by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's when, you know, he said, you know, that about uh, uh, that it would be March, I mean, excuse me, April, April 
18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, it was just, I was just so shocked. And there was a poor lady in the office at, at the time I got the call, and uh, uh, she told Brian and, and Catfish, says, I really think somebody needs to go in there and check on her. <laughs> and they said, no, I think she's, I think she's okay. I think it's, it's good. Whatever it yeah, is, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so they didn't know until I got off. Well, and then great. Brian said I picked him up and, turned, and did a helicopter. And I don't remember that either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pigeon, I know you spent part of your holiday here getting, getting Aaron's room ready. Because yes. there there are some, mm -hmm. some some rules and regulations about that, but I don't think he's going to have any problem. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Mm -mm. No, I don't think so. All right. He'll crash on that bed, and I think he'll be fine. I think so, too. A lot of years of preparation. Yes, yes, get, it has. Get, getting ready for him to come home. I have never, since we've gotten the news, mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I, I got up early this morning, and this is the first time that I've gotten up early. The sleep that I've had since he told me and everything, you just, you know, I haven't been sleeping good. <laughs> the weight's been lifted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine what it'll be like after on April 19th. Yes. <laughs> I will. I, as good as it is right now, I can't imagine it being uh -huh. any better. Because, I mean, it's just been, you know, I don't wake up in the middle of the night. You know, I go to sleep, and it's like, whew, boy, it feels good. Fantastic. I didn't, and I didn't realize I wasn't sleeping real good before, but, boy, I realize it now. Oh, good. That's great. Well, we're very happy to be able to uh, help spread this positive message out with the viewers that uh, hopefully may will have him whenever he's comfortable. Uh -huh sometime in 2017 mm -hmm. on here as well, but we'll keep you up to date on how the progress is going. Okay. And April 18th is the actual release date, Yes. but he actually goes into the transition period sometime in January. Sometime mm -hmm. in January. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Pigeon. <laughs> I'm just tickled to death. We knew it was going to come. I know it. Yes. You all have, and all, everybody else in Marion County and other counties, y'all just been right there with me the whole time. We're happy, We're happy that the outcome is <laughs> Yes, it's, <laughs> yes know, indeed. It's, it's so positive. It's, yeah. it's almost over. It's so, Absolutely. Absolutely. Almost over. Great. Well, thank you again, Ms. Gary White with Pigeon Deeds and Yvonne McNary <laughs> for the release of Aaron Glassman. Yes. <laughs>